by laying a layer of ice and snow on a wooden slide and letting passengers ride down on a wooden sled, the earliest prototype of the roller coaster was born. In places without snow, people used logs on tracks to let the sled slide down, but that turned out to be a bit wasteful. So why not just attach wheels to the sleds like the carts used in coal mines? At that point, a businessman saw a business opportunity, and thus the first roller coaster built purely for entertainment was created. The earliest roller coasters were very simple, just basic wooden support structures and wooden tracks, with cars that had four wheels. They also needed to add iron rails to the track to protect the wood underneath. Finally, the cars could rush downhill quickly thanks to gravity. But soon, people found problems with this. First, riders had to climb tall staircases to board the ride, and it was hard to get the car back to the top. More importantly, the ride couldn't stop safely, making it dangerous. So improvements were made. First, the track was changed into a closed loop. The loading platform was placed at the bottom, so riders didn't have to climb as many stairs. But how could the car get back up the slope? That's where the lift hill came in. On the lift hill, roller chains driven by motors were installed. At the bottom of the car, a metal rod called a chain dog would catch the chain at a specific point and pull the car uphill. Once it reached the top, the chain dog would disengage. From there, the car would complete the course under the power of gravity. But here's a safety concern. What if the chain broke during the climb? That could be dangerous. To prevent this, anti-rollback devices were added to the car. A ratchet system was installed on the track, so if the car tried to roll backward, it would automatically yeah, lock in place. Like the, this is like why you hear that click-clack sound when a roller coaster climbs the first hill. But there was still one more problem, how to stop the car safely. In the early days, braking systems were manual. Brake operators on the car would pull a lever to stop. Another method was using large friction pads on the track, controlled by an operator to slow down the car. These systems only worked on coasters with small slopes and low speeds. But over time, people wanted taller and faster roller coasters. To increase stability, the wheel system was improved. Upstop wheels and guide wheels were added to prevent derailment. This allowed roller coasters to go higher, faster, and take sharper turns, creating more excitement. To prevent passengers from being thrown from their seats, safety restraints were added. Early roller coasters used ratchet systems to lock the safety bars. When multiple cars were needed, they were connected with articulated joints. Eventually, wooden tracks couldn't keep up with the demand. Steel tracks replaced them, and the support structures were also made of steel. This allowed track designs to become more complex. Modern roller coasters go even further. Most use tubular steel tracks, which are smoother and allow for more flexible designs. Faster speeds also required more reliable braking systems. At that point, the braking system was upgraded to fin brakes. A steel fin was installed under the car, and brake pads on the track would clamp down on it to slow the car using friction. This entire process is computer controlled. Hydraulic systems are now used to control the safety restraints. They're not only safer, but can also be precisely adjusted to suit each passenger. Modern roller coasters also use magnetic braking systems to improve safety. These brakes use permanent magnets and metal fins on the track to slow the car. The eddy current effect creates a reverse magnetic field, which slows the car down. Although magnetic brakes can't bring the car to a complete stop, they provide a much smoother deceleration. Magnetic systems aren't just for slowing down, they can also speed up the cars. Electromagnetic force can be used to accelerate the cars, replacing traditional chain lifts. This technology is called a linear synchronous motor. So besides traditional roller coasters, we now also have inverted roller coasters, which let riders dangle their legs in the air, delivering a completely different experience.